Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to read one verse. Uh, that's from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. If you have your Bible, which is actually uh, having the uh, the text marked in red, what Jesus spoke. In the book of Acts, probably this is the last verse where you see Jesus speaking. And in the book of Acts where Luke said, I want to write to you in historical, orderly fashion what happened to the church. Verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I want us to listen very carefully. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. I want us to understand the order. It says, you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria. You understand? So three places Jesus is telling, you shall receive power and you will be witnesses. And you're going to be witnesses in three places and to the ends of the earth. Okay, so today we are going to learn from the book of Acts and I want all of you, if possible, write it down. And uh, in this book, if you look at it, Acts of Apostles is actually the description of this verse, the fulfillment of this verse. So what is this verse? You need to go to where? To Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So it is the fulfillment of that. That story is written in 28 chapters. Now when the uh, story is going on, if you look at it, there are 11, precisely 11 messages in the book of Acts. There are 11 sermons. The book of Acts started in AD 29 to 30. That's the time when the church was born. The story of the church till 62 to 63 is in Acts. So around 33 to 34 years of history of the church is given in the Bible. How many years? I want you to picture us. 33 to 34 years. And now if you look at it, God is using different apostles during different times. And all of them preached. And all of them preached. And fortunately for the greatness of God, 11 messages are written in the book of Acts. So we're going to learn through that. Because what happens is that the way you live your Christian life as you go along keeps changing. The messages that you were interested when you came to the Lord is no more fascinating you. You have changed. You want to hear something new. Our Christian life also changes, goes through radical changes. Is that correct? Is that biblical? Okay, so we're going to learn what does the Bible talk about? Every time a question is asked in your life, always remember the answer should be from the Bible. From where? From the Bible. Let me tell you. There are three messages of Peter. Three messages of Peter. One message of Stephen. Four sermons of Paul. And three testimonies of Paul in the book of Acts. That's 11 messages that we are talking about. We are going to learn each one. I would not be able to walk through each message in detail, but I'm going to. This is the treatment that I'm going to take. Hmm? The title, the purpose of message. See, always remember, whenever you share the word of God, there is a reason for your preaching. Whenever you speak to someone that you want to talk to about Christ, there's a reason. Without a reason, you should not. Most of the time, it might be for the wrong reason that I want to share the word of God nicely. That is not the right reason for you to preach. You understand? There is always a topic or a reason for the message. You understand? Number one. And then I'm going to touch the reason for that message and the application of the message. So two things we are going to learn. Or Every message, I'm going to tell you the reason for the message and the application for the message. So the learning is that how are we going to implement it in our life? Acts chapter 2, the church was born for the very first time. If you see, the sermon is from Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 40 is the message. So what is it? 
Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 40 is the message of Peter. Okay. This was preached to the church from a home where 120 people were sitting and praying for 10 days. On the 11th day, this message went out. Understood? On the 11th day, this message went out. The primary reason for this message is very simple. Invitation to Jesus. The church was born by the title, Invitation to Jesus. During the invitation of Jesus, there are many things Peter clarified from the Old Testament. There are three passages from the Old Testament that Peter is explaining. Okay, what does the Holy Spirit do? What the Holy Spirit came? What about Jesus? Jesus is raised and everyone. But I want to talk about, that's what I said, I'm not going to teach the whole message. I'm going to talk about a few things. Verse 36, it says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, assuredly, that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, Underline that. When they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Invitation of Jesus is meaningful when you teach a person how sinful their life is or how much of redemption is needed from sin. It all starts by telling them what is their spiritual state. Or Christian life starts from brokenness and a contrived spirit to the heart. You invite a person and the invitation has a reality in their life when they come to the throne room of grace with brokenness and contrived spirit. Please do not lead anybody to Christ without telling them what sin is. That's the way church was born. Do you hear what I said? Don't lead, to pe lead people to Christ saying that, hey, you have all problems? Come over. Christ got it. You don't have peace? Come over. No, that is not the primary reason. The primary reason where the church was born, they were cut, in, they pricked. One translation says they were pricked in their heart. About what? What pricked them? What pricked them? The realization that they were the reason why Christ went to the cross. You understand? When you realize your sin made Jesus hang on the cross, then you will have a true broken heart. Without that, there is no beginning. There is no beginning. You understand? Do you realize that Christ hung on the cross because of my sin? I deserved hell. I was supposed to go to hell. I deserved punishment. I deserve the wrath of God. And I have a solution. That is Jesus. That is your invitation. You heard? That invitation started from a simple group of people who sat together and prayed from a house, from the upper room. You heard what I said? And what is that? They came to Christ. And then what? Give me one second. Oh, sorry. When they come to Christ, in the very first message, when you lead someone to Christ, what is next? Have you thought about it? So you lead people to Christ. How? How do you lead people to Christ? By telling them, why should they come to Christ? Right? You have a problem or financial situation. You can go to a banker. He can solve it. Correct? Agreed? You have a problem of sickness. You get to the best multi-speciality hospital. Probably the doctor can help. I'm telling you, there is only one thing that the world can't help. What Jesus can help is to forgive your sin. Rest everything in life. There is some sort of the other sort of redemption or some sort of solution from man. But forgiveness of sin, conviction of sin is only in Jesus. So bring, to, bring people to Jesus by telling them what they really need. Understand? Now I want you to get hold of one more verse. 
Now, 3,000 people came to Christ by asking a very simple question, what shall I, what shall we do? Okay? And Peter says, repent, let everyone who is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin shall receive the gift of Holy Spirit. I would like to teach on 38 some other time about the three aspects of how the church was born. But I want to touch on verse 40. It says, but with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. The reason that you come to Christ is that you will be saved from the sinful nature of the world that you will not be like them. You understand? So Peter is trying. After that, Peter is exhorting. Their sins are forgiven. You understand? When they came to Christ, the sins are forgiven. But Peter is continuing to exhort them, saying that, hey guys, you should not be like the world. You should be saved from what? This perverse generation. You understand? The world has a style of operation. You have to be saved from that, not just forgiveness of sin. That's the way the church was born. You understand? The first message was not healing. The first message was not deliverance. Our first message was not that God will do that. Miracle, miracle, nothing. Very simple. You need to come to Christ because you need a savior and you are a sinner. And when you come, you need to overcome sin and to live as a holy man. Did you hear what I said? The first message Peter got up and said, what was that? The first message that Peter got up and said is very, very simple. Come to Jesus because you are a sinner and he is the Savior. Come to Jesus so that you can be transformed and live like Christ. Okay? AD 30. Miracles happen. Second sermon. So totally how many sermons are there? 11 sermons are there. Second sermon. Now this one, a great miracle happened. A lame man who was lame from the mother's womb for 40 years in Acts 3 was healed. 5,000 people came to the Lord. First message, how many people came to the Lord? 3,000 people came to the Lord. Remember one thing, if it is all about sin, it is all about righteous living. If the Lord is prompting you, God is responsible to change the heart of people. You are not and we cannot. When you manipulate things and when you try to make it acceptable gospel, remember one thing, gospel is offensive. Okay? Because gospel speaks about sin. If gospel speaks about sin, it will not be acceptable. Gospel can lead to two responses. If true gospel is preached, it will lead you to brokenness or bitterness. Two other things is going to happen. You don't like it. You don't want to hear it anymore. I don't like this thing at all. I want to go away from it. True gospel will lead to anger and bitterness and you will run away from it or it will lead to brokenness. You're not standing for popularity context. You understand? Oh, I want everyone to like my preaching. Uh, that's not gospel. Now, people came to the Lord. 3,000 people. The church is 3,000 people. Now, Peter is telling. They all came to Peter. Okay, verse 12. Chapter 3, the second message. Peter starts preaching. Second sermon is chapter 3, verse 12 to 26. Second message is chapter 3, verse 12 to 26. Peter starts a message this way. So when Peter saw it, you know, people came running to him. Peter said, he responded to people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why you look so intently at us as though we have, listen very carefully, as though by our power and our godliness, we made this man walk. Remember, the greatest hindrance of gospel is because you pretend to be godly. You take the glory. Peter was looked upon. Wow, this man is so holy. He did something. Great miracle. I'm telling you, 5,000 people would not have come and that church would have stopped if Peter took the glory. Now, do you take glory? Oh yeah, you do. How do we take it? We say, I prayed, God did a miracle. I fasted, I did it. Who took the glory? We took the glory. 
who should look good i should look good i preached i sang songs be very careful the glory belongs to god peter's message did not change when the church grew peter's message did not change when the miracles multiplied did you hear what i said your message should not change people grow when one person was alone sitting with you how you preached when 50000 people are coming it should not change church grew now church should make people everyone happy okay don't get into any sort of things like that peter's message was 19 the second thing i want you to understand repent therefore be converted come on peter how long will you preach the same thing how long peter will you preach the same thing the same year same thing again and again repent be converted your sins may be blotted out verse 26 to you first god having raised his servant jesus why was jesus raised sent him to bless you don't stop there you know what true blessing is true blessing is in the same verse is turning away turning away every one from your iniquity the second message was transformation what was the first message invitation to christ this is the spiritual growth you understand spiritual growth is that first message is invitation to christ second message is be transformed the very next thing is transformation if justification is true sanctification is your inheritance you heard what i said if you are saved from the penalty of sin you should overcome from the power of sin if you are truly sanctified one day you will be glorified if you overcome the power of sin one day you will be taken from the presence of sin to heaven that is transformation every day you will become like jesus the apostles did not change their message you understand john chapter 16 was 8 it says that when the holy spirit comes he teaches three things the holy spirit teaches you three things he will teach you about sin he will teach you about righteousness he will teach you about judgment every message should have the teaching of sin teaching of righteousness teaching of judgment my dear brothers and sisters if you are listening to any message which is not teaching you this this is not true gospel it doesn't matter who speaks it doesn't matter which church it doesn't matter which leader i am not telling dig into the word look at the word now let's keep going the third message that is after 5 years how many years after 5 years stephen is preaching stephen is preaching in ad 35 okay acts chapter 7 verse 2 to 53 is stephen preaching okay acts chapter 2 7 verse 2 to 53 he is giving the history of israel he is giving the history of israel but i want to talk about the focus of stephen verse 51 stephen is calling them you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart what is stephen calling you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears you always resist the holy spirit as your fathers did stephen why do you want to do it the church is about 50000 people if these people are going not going to listen forget them why do you want to go correct them no stephen the third message was exposing the resistance to the holy spirit what is the third message exposing the resistance to the holy spirit i'm telling you all around people are resisting the the work of the holy spirit you know how are you resisting the work of the holy spirit you know how few things listen not speaking of sin you build a pyramid you know what pyramid 
oh, this person is the highest, irrespective of the church. The leaders are like, you know, oh, somewhere else, they're not reachable. They tell it's a final word. No, the final word is the word of God. If you build a hierarchy, that is not a biblical order. Be very careful resisting the Holy Spirit. When you watch, watch, you don't see people crying out their sin and confessing their sin. You should ask, where is the conviction spirit of the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Spirit convicting? In Acts across, when this word is spoken, you see people crying out. The third message after five years, five years later, Five years later, verse 54, it says, when they heard these things, they were cut to heart. I'm telling you, the word of God will cut people heart. It might be, listen, it might be for brokenness or it might be for anger. True gospel will cut hearts. Did you hear what I said? True gospel will cut the hearts. Either they will be very angry with what they hear. No, this is not true. They are trying to be fanatics. They will get very angry. It is always leading to the cutting of the heart. It will lead to brokenness or it will lead to crying or it will lead to anger. If your message is not doing that, you need to pray that God gives you an anointing that way. I'm telling you, Acts 1 to 7 is the first few years of the church, but they are still in Jerusalem. Did you hear what I said? They are still in Jerusalem. Acts 8 to 12 is the story of the church going from Judea to Samaria. Acts 8 to 12. Next 14 years, the church is in Judea and Samaria. First two years, they were in Jerusalem. Acts 13 to 28 is the place where the church went to the ends of the earth. As I said, this story is about Acts 1.8. The first message was invitation to Jesus. Can we say that? The first message was invitation to Jesus. Invite Jesus to people for the thing what only Jesus can do. Invite Jesus for the reason why Jesus came into this world. Did you hear what I said? Invite people to Jesus for the reason why Jesus came into this world. Jesus came into this world so that a sinner can be righteous through the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross and from the resurrection power that you can live a transformed life like Jesus. That is the reason why Jesus came into this world. Rest everything is peripheral. You understand? Rest everything is peripheral. What is grace of God? Titus 2 verse 11 onwards it says, The grace of God brought salvation to everyone. And it taught us to deny and tell no to ungodliness. And this same grace taught us to wait for the blessed hope. You understand? If you look at that portion, chapter 2 verse 11, 12, 13, you don't see a full stop. It is a single sentence, I'm telling you. If you don't understand that, you will not understand what grace is. People are just getting hooked to the first part of the grace. You understand? Resistance to the Holy Spirit. Are you struggling with sin? Are you struggling with sin? Are you addicted to sin? In that case, you need to come to the presence of God and say, God, help me to overcome my resistance. You understand? You are called to live holy. You understand? The fourth message, Acts chapter 10, verse 34 to 43. Acts chapter 10. Now the church is 11 years old. How many years old? The church is 11 years old. And Peter is in the house of Cornelius. I want you to understand one thing. Listen very carefully. You are responsible to sit in the presence of God and to teach people who God has given to you 
and the depth of your fellowship is your responsibility. The breadth of the fellowship is God's responsibility. We have flipped it. You are consumed by the thought of the breadth. No. Even if it is one person, you should be committed to the depth. You understand? Even if it is one person, make him a Peter. Do not have the focus of having 20,000 people who are not committed to Christ. Oh yes, people will grow. Let God do that. That's not your responsibility. Share the gospel. If God is willing, let God do that. Eleven years. Why did I say that? Why did Peter not go to Gentiles before? Have you thought about it? Eleven years? Peter? You know why? Because the apostles moved by the prompting and the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It was the time when the Lord told Peter to go to Cornelius' home. Three years before, if God told Peter, would have gone. Five years before, God would have asked him, he would have gone. Obedience. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Now, 11 years, Peter has experienced three and a half years walking with Jesus. Listen to me. Three and a half years walking with Jesus. 11 years of miracles. Started with miracles. So many miracles. What is Peter's message? Listen to me. Chapter 10, 34 to 43. It says very clearly, and Peter opened his mouth. In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears God and works righteousness, still the focus is fearing God and righteousness. It did not change. Hey, people in Cornelius house, do you know we have a God who will do miracles for you, who will bless you, who will take you to some other... No, 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 no. The message did not change in 11 years. The message is still the same. Fear of God, righteousness. Peter, won't you feel bored about this? That's what Peter said. In the epistle, he said, I am reminding you things that you know. I am reminding you things what you already know. But I will still remind you. Because I want you to remember even when I go. Now, what was the fourth message? Listen very carefully. Verse 42. And he com commanded us to preach to people. Preach to people. To testify that he who was ordained by God to judge. Huh? To be judge of the living and the dead. The primary focus is the righteous God is going to come back as a judge. You heard? To the Gentiles, Peter is telling, oh, first time you present, why do you want to scare people? You know why? Because none of the apostles believe their words their sweet way of presenting could bring somebody to the Lord. Only God can do it. Because for them, it was so important to tell the truth. You heard? Truth is important. He told very clearly, he is the judge. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. Peter is still talking about the forgiveness of sin. You heard? Message did not change. Message did not change. 11 years, the message did not change. It is one thing to be fascinated about Revelation end days and all those, but your primary thing is your understanding of sin, your righteous walk. God is a true judge. Justice, sovereignty of God, you should be very clear on it. That should be your foundation. Remaining everything is good. You should learn it. I do dig on it. But that is not your primary food. You understand? Don't make the appetizers and the desserts your main course. Make sure that your main course is righteous living. Sinful life, understanding it, judgment of God. That's the fourth message after 11 years. Now the scene changes. Peter is no more there. You hear mostly the whole scenario changes. 
Now it is going to transition to Philip and Paul. Let us go to the next message in Acts 13. I want us to understand, okay? When you read Acts 13, verse 1, you read a story over there, okay? Acts 13, you see a story there. And that story is, in the church at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Nigger. And verse 2, it says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul. We are in AD 48. Church is 18 years old. You heard what I said? Church is 18 years old. Around 35, 36 AD, Paul came to the Lord. Paul's Christian life is about 13 to 14 years old. God has called him to be a missionary after 14 years. He did not take a decision and just say that I'll be a missionary and run. The Holy Spirit prompted. The Holy Spirit guided. You understand? When the Holy Spirit puts things on your heart, you won't be able to sleep, my friend. We have misunderstood ministry for right living. We think doing something for God is going to enable your blameless walk. No. <laughs> if God wants to use you, he will use you. Great. Good. But you are committed for your blameless life, your consecrated life. Our Christendom has come to a point that when you read the Bible, you think of somebody else to whom I share. You understand? Your heart should be your walk with the Lord. 14 years, Paul, you could have preached so many places. But God separated him. When? After 14 years. Paul's message. Okay? Paul's message. Chapter 13, verse 13, chapter 13, 16 to 41 is a sermon of Paul. First sermon of Paul. Paul is sharing the gospel to the Jewish people in midst of the Gentiles. Okay. The fifth message, what we are learning is Paul's sermon to Jewish people in midst of the Gentiles. I want you to read a few key verses and I'll tell you what is the theme of the message. Okay. He's telling the history of Israel, not as detailed as Stephen did. Chapter 13, verse 22, last portion, it says, David, a man after my own heart. Who will do all my will? You understand? Paul is preparing his audience to understand what is so important is that your heart is completely surrendered to God, that God can use your heart. Then he goes on verse 26, he says, Men and brethren, sons and family of Abraham, those among who, who, who fear God, to you, the word of this salvation was sent. So God's word is sent to whom? Who fear God, whose heart is prepared. You understand? You fear God and your heart is prepared. And the theme is this, verse 38. Therefore, let it be known to you, brothers, that through this man is preached to you forgiveness of sin. 18 years later, church still talks about forgiveness. Did you hear what I said? 18 years later, church is still talking about forgiveness. Do you know that everybody in every city has heard the story many times? And verse 39, it says, By him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified. There is a sanctification and a transformation that comes by the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that did not happen through the law. A moralistic rule, a moralistic law only can change your outward. You understand? When you do right, your heart and mind wants to do the bad, but somehow you want to do right because you know that is right. 
But when Jesus comes into your heart, you're desperate to do right. A justification that comes only through Jesus when he steps into your heart. That's his message. Jewish people, you fear God. Jewish people, you morally right. But you know one thing? Inside out change can happen. When? When? When Jesus comes in. The closest worldly example I can tell you is if your child gets 100 out of 100, but while studying, he was always crying because he never wanted to study. It's a miserable experience, right? But if the child is loving studies, you don't have to sit and pamper because that's an inside out change. You understand? Do you want to live right? You will want and you want desperately to live right if Jesus is working in you. The one who started a good work in you, Philippians 1.6. He started a work in you. Paul's message. You understand? The fifth message in the Bible after 18 years is very simple. Justification that happens in your heart because Jesus came. You understand? I love Jesus. And when I see the evil in the world, I'm not angry, but I'm desperate because Jesus is in me and I, I don't want to hurt Jesus. Do you understand? God's people, I just want to tell you, you will see misuse and abuse of God's word done by God's people. And within a second, listen to me, within a second that can turn out to be bitterness in your life if true justification of Jesus did not happen in your heart. You will become so judgmental and angry at the entire system because you are so corrupt and we can be such a hypocrite within no time if our compassion is not in our heart. And compassion happens only if justification started in your heart because Jesus is in your heart. You understand? Spiritual leaders, you will hate them when they are doing wrong things. Churches, you will hate them because you, are, you can't stand corruption. That's discernment. But compassion is different. You understand? That is the compassion that Jesus looked at Judas and said, Friend! Do you know that statement? We can become so easily bitter, angry, unforgiving because discernment completely tied with compassion is a right walk with Christ. Otherwise, our righteousness can be very peripheral. You understand? Be very, very careful. When you see people doing wrong things, you should have a heart to pray for them that they are also precious in the sight of God. One simple test that can be done. When you see somebody doing wrong, you kneel down and say, God, in the name of Jesus, I bless this brother or sister. If you can freely do, you are on the right path. You can go to the other extreme by thinking that I will swallow everything wrong done by everybody because I'm not supposed to correct. No, that is another extreme. Sin is sin. It needs to be corrected, but out of compassion. That's what Paul did. Justification. The next message, and I want us to understand, next we jump to Acts 17. Acts 15 is the council which had happened in AD 15. Okay, The first missionary trip you read that story from Acts 13, verse 4 to chapter 14, verse 28. Okay, First missionary trip. First missionary trip. I want us to understand that. And that is happening around 49 AD. The church is about 19 years. Second missionary trip, which happened in AD 51, you can read that story in Acts 15, verse 35 to Acts 18, verse 22. Okay. During the second missionary trip, I want to talk to you about the second message of Paul mentioned. Now, this is AD 51. The church is 
21 years old. How many years old? 21 years old. Acts 17. Paul's next message, this is to the Gentiles. The first one was to the Jewish people in midst of the Gentiles. This is to the Gentiles in Argopas, which is in Athens. He's preaching. That message is in Acts 17, verse 22 to 31. Okay, 22 to 31. 22, Paul says, Paul stood in midst of Ariugo Pagus. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And said, men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. In all things, you are very religious. But they missed the mark. Verse 30. Truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked them. Hmm? But now commands all men everywhere to repent. 21 years later, message is same. Repent. Repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance. The focus is on judgment even after 21 years. Correct? I always tell. Have you gone to any hilly areas? Very hilly areas where a lot of hairpin is there? Covered with snow? When you go over there, there is a board written, sharp turn. Careful. Will you scold the guy who kept the board? What is this? I came for vacation. Why are you some, simply trying to scare me? Do you say that? No. You will thank because that will make you go carefully. Judgments are go of God needs to be understood carefully so that you will work out your salvation in fear and trembling. This is not to scare you. This is for you to be careful on pitholes. This is for you to understand. You give a foothold to Satan. He will destroy your life by bringing a stronghold of world into your life. You heard? You need to learn the judgment of God. You need to know the judgment of God. You need to learn that. Jesus said about judgment more and more. Jesus said very carefully. Very carefully, don't fear the one who can kill your body, but be fearful of the one who can kill your body and your soul and put you to hell. That is Jesus. Fear him. All Athens, you're talking to people who are coming to the Lord. First time you want to talk about judgment? The church has taught not to talk about judgment. That is for some people who are sitting in some Bible college who understand so many things. Don't touch revelation. Don't touch judgment of God. Oh, God is gracious. God is so good. The goodness of God is the proof that he is a true judge. The message never changed. God's people, when you are sharing the word of God, share the full gospel. Understand? I'm telling you, it will make people bitter or it will make people broken. Because it will cut the heart of people because this is the truth. You, I, out. I did this. I preached there. I prayed. Uh, God can't trust you. Be behind the cross that only Jesus has seen. Only Jesus has seen. Don't tell stories, dreams, visions. Tell the word of God. If you are confused, read the word of God. Cry out. Break your heart. That's the sixth message. The third missionary trip is written from chapter 18, verse 23 to chapter 21, verse 17. The third missionary trip happened in AD 54. Paul's third missionary trip, the seventh message, Acts 20. He's preaching in AD 53 to the church of Ephesians. 
This is the last sermon that Paul preached to the church of Ephesians just before he going. So three years he has been preaching. Three years he has been teaching them. Now he's leaving Ephesians and going. The seventh sermon. If you read chapter 20, verse 18 downwards, let me read verse 20 to you. How I kept back nothing that was helpful and proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house. Paul did not go about Establishing church buildings which is large enough to capture everyone over there into one room. That has become the focus for many people. He went house to house. You understand? Acts of Apostles. The Holy Spirit came in the upper room, in a house. Peter, when he was delivered, in Mark's home, in Acts 12, verse 12, I'm telling you a few things. In Mary's house, you know, I was thinking, in Kapradha home, they met many times in Peter's home. Even when Peter was running, there was a mark on Peter that the Lord is going to protect and guide him and, you know, hold him. Mary's home, there was prayer. I'm telling you. There was a call on Mark when even when Mark ran, God's hand was there. My friends, have prayer in your home. Have meetings in your home. Your children will have Mark. Demons will drive over from your scenario. Your environment will change. Have prayers in your home. Stop going and seeing and coming. <laughs> Romans 16 was 3 to 5. It says that when in Rome, Priscilla and Aquila was there. It says that there was a church in her house, in their house. They came to Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 19. The church in the house of Aquila and Priscilla. Church of Philemon. Colossians church. Philippians, Philemon chapter 1, verse 2. The, ch how, the, the church in the house of Philemon. Colossians 4, 15. The greeting the house and the church in the house of Nymphia. You read Corinthians, it says that the churches, huh? plural, of Galatia, churches of Rome, churches of Asia. Acts 20.20, 20, where we say that he taught from house to house. Acts 5 verse 42, they broke bread and taught from house to house. I am not asking uh, gathering in a church outside is wrong. That's not what I'm saying. Okay, Don't take me wrong. I'm telling there is power and gathering in houses too. And focus on that. Understand? Don't give me excuses that you don't have that, this, this, this. No, no. That's not the biblical principle. But what did he preach over there to Ephesians church? Okay, listen. Acts 20, verse 21. Testifying to Jews also the Greek repentance towards God. Did you read that? Repentance to the Lord. Church is 23 years old. The message did not change. Testifying to Jews also to the Greeks. Repentance towards God. Verse 29 to 32. Please study that. Okay, Please study that. Verse 29. For I know this. After my departure, savage wolves will come in among you. Not sparing the flock. Peter taught them for two years. Listen there very carefully. Also from among yourself men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Don't get offended. The church where Paul established, where Paul was the preacher and the teacher for three years, Paul is saying, moment I go, there is going to be savaging wolves that is going to come in. And verse 31, it says that, therefore, watch, remember, for three years, I did not cease you to want every night and day. Every night and day with tears. What is this? We feel that one great preacher, one hour we heard, 
Oh, now, okay, good enough that I applied it. I'm ready to go to heaven. Great, what message, you know? Paul is telling two, three years, day and night, I've been crying and teaching you, but that is not going to keep you. Do you know that? That is not going to keep you. What will keep you? Verse 32, now, brethren, I commend you to God, to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Only one thing can keep you. You're studying the word of God. Did you hear that? You personally needs to study the word of God. You listening to me, coming over here, you listen to anybody, it is just going to just prompt you to do things. Unless you study the word of God, nothing is going to happen. You need to study the word of God. You need to build your faith by studying the word of God, reading the word of God. You understand? Focus on the word of God. Don't compromise on anything else. Nothing else is important. People, position, power, nothing is worth eternity. Understand? Don't compromise. Have a compassionate heart. Next one. Next is actually the next phase of Paul's life. Three testimonies along with the message. First, Paul talks to Jewish people in Jerusalem. Okay, It's a defense of faith. Acts 22, 1 to 21. Acts 22, verse 1 to 21. I just want to focus on a few verses. I'll just rush through this. Next five, six minutes, I'll finish this off. It says, Acts 22, verse 1 to 21 is the message. He's telling. Okay, now listen very carefully. This is after 30 years of church. How many years? 30 years of church. Paul's Christian life is about 25 years. How many years? 25 years. After 25 years, if you strong Christian life, where you went for mission trip and everything, now you are called and say, hey, tell the difference of your faith. What will you tell? Hmm? What will you tell? Oh, what will you tell? You have no idea. There was a dead man. I just prayed. He woke up. You have no idea what my God is. You know what Paul said? Verse 7. I fell to the ground hearing a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, who are you, Lord? He said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth whom you are persecuting. That's your message. After 25 years, Paul is telling him, what I remember is that there was a day I was going to Damascus. Jesus met me. Simple. Some of you feel so obligated that if you told a message, huh, God is prompting you to tell once more. That day when you came to the crowd, you saw the person last time when you preached, that person was there. Now you're confused. Should I say that message? You already heard it. You have a panic attack. Now what will I do? Because I can't preach that. Because he already heard it. He will think that I have only one message. You should stop preaching. I'm telling you. You should stop preaching. You should stop sharing. Because it's all about you. It's all about you. Be very careful. Why did I say that? Do you know these Jewish people, how many times they heard the story? Everyone knows the story. 25 years, this, this man is a trauma for Jews. They know the story by heart. And most of them would have been there. The story did not change. Story did not change. He goes and stands in front of Felix. Hmm? Chapter 24, verse 10 to 21. The same story. The same story. Paul, don't you feel bored? Don't you feel bored by telling the same story? Uh, I was going to Damascus. But the details of the story is increasing. That's a different topic, I'll tell you. You can find details about it. Okay, I want you to understand this. When he's talking the first time, he's talking about it was at noon. Then he tells that, okay, it was much brighter. It was uh, very bright and the sun was so shining. 
first time he say i heard the voice then he say the language in which try to find the correlations because the clarity of his testimony increases as time passed you understand but for us is other way around do you remember when you got saved how you to remember paul's clarity over the salvation increased every day you understand one day we'll probably do a comparison study of all the three testimonies but what did he tell felix what did he tell felix let's read the response of felix then you'll understand verse 25 chapter 24 verse 25 now he reasoned about righteousness seriously this guy is a prisoner he should be saved now what will paul if he keeps his mouth closed he'll be let free he can go for mission trip but this fellow wants felix to come to god <laughs> can you imagine that he wants felix to come to the lord now as he reasoned about righteousness self control and judgment did you hear that the righteousness self control is sin judgment the theme is same the theme is same 32 years later also the church did not change the standard felix was afraid <laughs> you read that felix was afraid and answered go away for now when i have convenient time i'll call you he got scared just just i just just go away i don't want to talk to you i told you true gospel will have two reactions it will be bitter to them or it will be broken to them next one in front of agrippa chapter 26 was 2 to 23 you can see he's talking to agrippa but let me just tell one thing ago his heart okay the next message was 29 okay to felix it was righteousness to agrippa paul is telling oh and paul said i would to god not only you but also who hears me might become both almost and all together such as i except these chains or feels that agrippa may come to the lord i oh, one pastor poor fellow one thing he says we feel he'll never come to the lord paul is thinking agrippa will come to the lord can you believe that i want you to be like me modeling look at his confidence i want you to be like it means can you believe agrippa knows everything about paul they would have done all the investigation he's telling like be like me other than the chains there also he told the entire story jesus met me the story goes on and on the last message last 5 minutes then i'll stop for questions last message 862 how serious time paul said in chapter 28 was 25 to 20 32 years later it says very clearly for the hearts of this people have grown dark was 27 the ears are hard of hearing their eyes have closed lest they should see and their eyes and hear their ears lest they should understand and their heart turn so that i should heal them. it is the healing of the heart after 33 years still the apostle speaks but you know here people did not accept it there's only two group of people one angry went away another broken accepted you understand you don't find both the group in churches now there is nobody who is angry who walks away other than a church politics hearing the message nobody goes angry hearing the message nobody gets broken you know why true gospel is not taught if true gospel is taught this will happen people will run away or people will cry and come to the lord every message that up this group of people they walked away therefore let it be known to you salvation of god has been sent to gentiles church 33 years old message did not change please dig 28 chapters and tell me anything what you hear on pulpit is it preached any time in the first century church a single time you find not a single time not a single time not on sermons be very careful what you listen to what you preach understand that's what it is last 3 minutes if you have any questions you can ask